Praise God. I sounded like I was in a in a tunnel, so I figured it wasn't. <clears throat> well, it is good to be in the house of God on a Wednesday night. Amen. Unfortunately, uh, I will say this, Sister Hannah came through her surgery very well, and she's back home, so we thank God for that. Uh, but Greg and Celeste could not be here tonight, so we're going to just do some old-fashioned MP3 singing songs and worshiping God. So it is what it is. You do what you got to do, right? Uh, but we want to praise God tonight and worship God, and we want to acknowledge him uh, in all that we do. And so let's just welcome the presence of the Lord into this place, and let's just see what the Lord has in store for us. So, Father, we thank you so much for the honor. Thank you, God, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy toward us. We thank you, O oh God, that it is with loving kindness that you have drawn us into the wells of salvation. Now we pray that you would have your way in this place tonight, God. Move according to your own good pleasure, that the will of God might be done in this place as it is in the heavens. For, Lord, this is your house, Lord, and we want you to have your way. So, Lord, whatever is needed tonight, God, speak to us, God. Father, if there's healing needed, heal, God. If there's deliverance needed, deliver, God. Whatever is needed, strongholds broken, chains broken, God, yokes destroyed, God. I believe you to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, O oh God, Lord, bless the people, Lord, as we magnify your name. And for all of it, we're going to give to you alone the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Let's worship God, saints.
to bless his name tonight.
on an open sea And ever there's a storm in my sea But I have a friend Who watches over me When the breeze turns into a gale Cause I The sun to shine again. I know the master of the world. Somebody needs to listen to that. Sometimes I soar like an eagle to the sky. Among the seeds, my soul can be found. An unexpected soul. Right from the heights If it may bring me low But it can never bring me down Oh, I know what I'm saying to your name Jesus oh we're so grateful to you Lord hallelujah how many of y'all are so glad you know the master of the wind oh God thank you dear Lord amen amen you can be seated just for a few moments so thankful for God's presence amen sometimes you have to do things that are unorthodox um, I wish I knew how to play everything and but I, I do know how to sing just a little bit. So we got some good singers around here. And we just need a few more musicians. And then we'll be all right. But God is not hindered or encumbered, unencumbered by musical instruments. For he inhabits the praises of his people. And so it doesn't matter. We could be out in a wheat field somewhere. And just begin to sing to the Lord. The presence of God would come in. Because that's what the Lord inhabits. 
I tell people oftentimes, if you want God's presence, you've got to give him a place to dwell in. And if you praise him, I'm telling you, saints of God, where two or three are gathered in his name, he will be in the midst of us. And when Jesus comes in, there's nothing that is impossible. He can do anything. He can heal to the uttermost, deliver to the uttermost. He can save to the uttermost. And so I'm just so thankful, so thankful uh, to be here tonight. I asked Brother Brent if he would to share the word of the Lord with us this evening. Amen. And so I'm going to get out of the way and let him go here in just a minute. But I do want to welcome Daniel Bevins. He's here with us tonight. And we're so thankful that you came tonight to be with us. Amen. And gentlemen, I've known for quite a few years. Uh, our daughters were uh, really good friends growing up. Uh, but Brother Jeff Berry, we're so glad for him to be here with us. Amen. On this evening as well. Amen. God is just so good, saints. He's good all the time. Amen. And I want us to remember that in our hearts. The Lord is always good to us, saints of God. And it doesn't, goodness, the goodness of God is not necessarily dictated by circumstance or situation. Amen. David said he was going to go through the valley of the shadow of death. That doesn't seem like a good situation or circumstance. But he said, I will fear no evil because you are with me. And your rod and your staff, they do comfort me. And there's something about no matter what you're going through, if you're just, as these songs said, he's the master of the wind. Amen. That storm was not a good situation for those disciples, but it turned out really great because they were able eventually to look at one another and say, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? And so we thank God for Jesus. Amen. We thank God for that we serve a king of kings and a Lord of lords, and there's nothing impossible to him or for him. And there's no circumstance or situation that we face that is beyond his reach and beyond his ability to care and to strengthen and to help. And so I'm just thankful to be here tonight. Amen. But I want Brother Brent to come and share the word of God. I just wanted to welcome these gentlemen to be here with us. And so, Brother Brent, amen, come and preach the word, brother. Hold on. Uh, I can be found in the house of God and... The only thing I know how to be is just raw and be open and vulnerable. I mean, if we're, if we're open and vulnerable before God, you know, we are brothers and sisters keepers. I've been, uh, I always try to pray because I want to be a help to each and every one of us. I need help. We all need help. We all need Jesus. And, and the messages that we've been getting for the past few months, I mean, my God, just just plow, 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 and I mean, my God, you gotta you gotta break up that fallow ground, this old flesh, those old mindsets, thought patterns. But somebody has got to sow seed. That's what happens when that ground's getting plowed up. Somebody's got to be sowing that seed. Word of God says, one planteth, one waters, but God gives the increase. It's all for the glory of God and. And I'll be straight frank with you tonight. I don't know how the Lord wants to go with this. Because I prayed and I prayed and I asked the Lord. I, I pray for my messages. God, what do we have need of? This is a body. You can see my natural body and how it functions. My arm, my hands, my feet works with my legs. We are a body in Christ. We all got different parts to do in the body. Part not doing its part affects the body. I've been praying and, and I asked God, I said, what, what's, what's your message? What, what, what do you want to tell the children of God? And the Lord gave me a dream, laid out the way he gave it to me. He gave me a dream and I was in the church parking lot and a brother and the Lord said, are you preaching tonight? I said, Lord willing. He said, well, what are you preaching on? The manifestation of the Spirit of God and it is their evidence. The manifestation of the Spirit of God and is their evidence. First thing you want to do, I woke up and I jotted it down, was I started digging in the Word of God. 
First thing I wanted to run to was the gifts of the Spirit of God. What, what's, you know, the gifts and how they apply. And be frank, I, I studied for days and days to no prevail. I mean, my God, I, I could literally, by the grace of God, break them down for you and how they apply and how they're used in the body of Christ. But there wasn't nothing there. There, was, there, wasn't, there wasn't that unction from God that that's the way God wanted to go. So I'm like, Lord, what, well, where are you trying to go with this? The manifestation of the Spirit of God. And do you have the evidence? I guess the way God wanted to go with it because the Spirit of God operates in different ways. Manifestation of the Spirit of God could be when you got born again and get baptized in the Spirit, but the evidence of the Spirit of God being in you is what do you do with the messages that God keeps sending? What do we keep doing with the manifestation of the Spirit of God that when we, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, and God knows what each and every one of us have need of in our own lives. He knows everything about us. Our hearts are numbered. He knows the very intent of her heart. He formed you when you was in your mother's womb. We hear that word of God. It plows us up sometimes. You just can't move. <laughs> you, you, you feel like your feet's in concrete and you're like, oh God, it's me. But what are we doing with it? What are we doing with it when the Spirit of God starts manifesting and convicting our hearts of that sin? Do we sit there on the pew and I'm worried about what Brother Chris knows about me? Does the Word of God not say to confess your faults one to another that you may be fervently healed? And you wonder why children of God go around bound in fetters and chains. There ain't no fruits of the Spirit. There ain't no peace of God. You know, whom the Lord says free is free indeed. God born again, he said it's free, but what, what are we doing with it? When the word of God starts plowing us up and that seed of the word of God is telling us that God loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. That he gave us his only begotten son. And how much he loved us to get on a cross and to die for us. My God. Hey, just because you hold a position in the body of Christ, it don't put you above nobody else. The Word of God says to feed my sheep. Well, my God, I think it'd be all right for us all just to get on the same level. Read I need to know your testimony. I need to know what God has done for you. I need to know, Brother Jimmy, what God's done for you. I need to be able to go to each and every one of you and confess my faults one to another. <clears throat> Maybe it's something I'm deal Brent's dealing with in his flesh. I'm not perfect. I strive to be by the grace of God. I strive every day to be steadfast. Striving against sin. Striving against the dead works of this flesh. A carnal mind's an enmity with God. Lean not to your own understanding. When I was growing up, we had a lot of religion. It wasn't relationship. I'm talking about religion that God had a measuring stick, and boy, if you didn't meet this measure. Man. No matter what you've done, you, you couldn't do it right. You was going to hell, hell, hell. That's all you heard. My whole entire life it was like that. Lord had to break that religion off. Teach me relationship with him. That I'm not to judge my brother. I can righteous judge. But to edify you. To build you up. To lift you up. That when I see you giving into a sin, it ain't about throwing stones at your glass house or condemning you, but helping you. We are a brothers and sisters keeper. You know why the enemy wants chisholm in the body? He wants separation. He don't want you to be able to confess your faults one to another. Huh? 
Imagine that foot. People says, I don't have to go to church. We've heard this preach so many times. I don't have to go. To yes, you do. Fake you, forsake yourself not from the sin. Huh? He, he positions you in a body of Christ, of believers. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How are you going to get delivered? That of the sins that so easily beset you. God, you know when we sit at home, what if, what if you're the foot? Leg waiting on a miracle. Amen and amen. What if they're needing a touch from God or a word from heaven on how to overcome the sin that's in their life? And you sit at home and you keep it to yourself. The Lord says, manifestation of the Spirit of God, Brent, also bring in fruit worthy of repentance. You want to know somebody that's overcome the sin? That they go up here to the altar or they are at home and they ask God for forgiveness or wherever they're at. But do you know how they how you know they more to fight it down? Because of fruit. They're not ashamed to talk about it no matter how bad. They ain't worried about man judging them and what they think because the grace of God is flowing in that area. They're free. I've got to examine myself sometimes. The message that was preached. I mean, my God. Last one, Brother Dave, when, when he got up and God used him. But here, here's the thing with that. Daughters for it. When one of us hurts, should never one of us be hurting? If I'm dealing with something in my own life and it's sin, shouldn't I be able to come to any one of you and confess it and help me pray about this? So I can nail it down so I can go free. All my life, I, I, I've heard it just preached, well, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. There's a three-step program for that. There's a six program for that. There's a 12-step program for that. It's kind of like going to the doctor for anxiety pills and everything else. It's all the natural part. Where's the spiritual part? Well, where's the spiritual part? What's the Word of God say to do? What's the Word of God say for Brent to do? To confess my faults one to another that I may be fervently healed, trusting that Brother Dave's going to pray for me. Why wasn't these altars full the other night? Man, we didn't move because of pride. Worried about being judged? Man, I need help. God, I started digging in the Word of God about that manifestation of the Spirit of God. Lord, I tell people all the time, they're like, how do you, how do you even tell on yourself like that? By the grace of God. Because it ain't nothing Brent can do in his own power. It ain't by his name. It ain't by his blood. It's about what Jesus done. Amen. My question is going to be tonight, and this is the reason I say it. You know, for the past few months, and this is what the Spirit of God showed me, and I've been praying about it. Pastor brought up that, you know, God lowered the hedge on Job. Tested. Huh? What about when we lower the hedge by giving in to the sin? So easily beset us. You know that one you tuck away in the corner. You know that one when you go home and you're all by yourself. So you think. But God sees all and he knows all. But the good news is tonight, he's willing to deliver. He is willing to deliver. Well, I'll tell you what, some, I'll tell you what, if some of us, if we could just put it up on the wall. And replay that whole week before we come to the house of God. And believe it or not, some of y'all's countenances tells it anyway. 
Amen and amen. I say it because I love you. But honest to God, I mean, shouldn't be no problem with God if he wanted to sit up here on display. If I ain't got nothing to hide, <laughs> if I ain't got nothing to hide, there's nothing to worry about. If there's grace flowing in every area, praise God, I'm glad to put it up there. Kevin can open up your phone. Pass it around. Read some text messages. Read some PMs. You got anything you, you hide in there, boy, you don't want nobody to see? How about some pictures? How about we go on some Google and do some search history? Oh, amen and amen. Our lives are open before God. We fear man more than we fear God. Whew, boy, it's getting hot in here now. How about them contacts? That old man's dead. Oh, all things. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. That's everything in my life, Dave. I ain't got the same old friends. I don't. I don't hang out with the same old crowd. <laughs> Woo! Don't belong there. I know I don't. I've tried it. don't work. When you're truly born again, it won't work. I've got code on God. I backslid. I try to go back to the world. Well, you shouldn't say that. I'm thankful. I'm thankful God delivered. I'm thankful for God's mercy and long suffering. By God, I find out every day His word is true. That His arm can't be short. <laughs> Woo! My God. I to go back, got hurt by the church. It's okay for me to talk about it because I'm healed of it. But I got hurt by my old church, that religion. Tear me down. Didn't even come to visit me. Didn't leave the 99 and go after the one like the word says. Hey Amen. You think that don't bother you? Sit at home for a while see if anybody gives you a call. See if anybody comes by. Hey Amen. When you hurt, I should hurt. If you're sick... I should be there to be praying over you. My God, I'm thankful for this body of believers because of the love of God that I feel in here. I don't have to hide nothing. And if I do, I need to be delivered from it. The good news is the Word of God is preached here. Back, back to the closed room, your bedroom wherever you're at, that, that dead works of the flesh, something that God keeps wooing you. Right here. I paid for that. I paid for that. You think it don't break his heart? Because it does. If it grieves my spirit like it grieved Lot's spirit, it grieves me to see people. Because there's a payday. It's sin in season, right? But then you're going to have to pay the cost. The enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. Boy, boy everybody wants the gifts. What's my gift? God, I want to operate in that. I, th I think we need to allow God to do the searching and and plowing up, and, and when he uncovers something. You don't know what to do. You don't got to take these step programs. You don't got to do A, B, C. The reason I say that is because God was dealing with me on something in my life. But every time Brent would give in to it, fruit of repentance, because I can tell it, because God wants me to tell it, it's just the way he laid this message out. Kept dealing. I'm single. Maybe somebody else in here is dealing with the same thing, but it's okay. 
God's grace is flowing in this area. God puts desires in a man and in a woman, and they're natural. And if you're not born again, those desires are still there. And yet flesh is still desiring, wanting to do things pleasing to the flesh. I think you know where I'm going without even saying it. But I've dealt with that for years. But every time that I give in to it, the enemy comes condemning, shaming, and guilting every single time. And no matter how many times I confess it got prior for it, some people I confess it. Every answer we need is in the Word of God. And if we had just asked the Holy Ghost, God don't waste nothing. You listen to the ones the other night testifying about how God's given them a new hunger and a thirst after his righteousness that they're getting hungry for the word of God again. But then you heard some of them testify about prayer. Praying will keep you from sinning or sinning will keep you from praying. So when that old desire of Brent's flesh start raising up, I'm like, not happy. Boy, the Spirit of God. Now, the Spirit of God's greater. But here's the thing. You have free will. <laughs> Amen. You've got to set a watch over your eyes. There's three ways. Whatever you set your eyes on, nobody's going to follow. Set your eyes on the Word of God. My flesh started raising up, and temptation started coming. The devil used them desires against you, the way God created them to be. He will to get you to sin. You have a choice in the matter. Start raising up. I said, God, I'm sick. I'm sick to death of this. I'm tired of him condemning me, shaming me, and guilting me in this area of my life. God, how do I make it dead? Hmm. 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 Holy Ghost said, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 6 and read verse 7, and I want you to speak this. It happens. I flip over. Get in there. Here's what the word says. For he that is dead is free from sin. You look, now I can see this, but there was a seed planted a while back. The enemy tries to convince you about putting shackles, putting you back in fetters and chains, and he's got you in that prison. The Lord's done all that. He's opened the door. He's just waiting for you to believe the word of God that whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. Amen. Some things we shouldn't be setting our eyes on on our phone. Hey, that's me. But here's the thing. There ain't no such thing as personal conviction. If the Holy Ghost is convicting me, he's convicting you. Same spirit. Same spirit. Oh, TikTok, boy, that's full of perversion. Dear God in heaven, I thank God for godly women that dress modestly. Amen. I used to leave this button and button right here all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, this, this, ain't, this might not be the kind of preaching that you're used to, but praise God. I like something that will uncover me. Because here's the thing, we are a body. And if I was dealing with it, I guarantee you if I'm the foot, the leg's probably dealing with it too. And so's the arm, so's the hand, so's the foot, amen. <laughs> God's no respect of person. Have enough evidence in it that I... I confessed it before every one of you. Are you dealing with something? Now, maybe it ain't just like mine, but maybe it's another way. But do you have enough evidence of the Spirit of God in you to know those cords of love drawing you? Huh? 
Do we, my God, we need to go back to the old past. We need to go back to be ye holy because I'm holy. Be ye clean to bear the vessel of the Lord. Can we walk the talk? You know, if you offend in one point, every single you start losing power in that area because you don't. The enemy will shame and guilt you and condemn you. And even after you ask for forgiveness, he still rides your coattail. Amen, boy, he is. That's not what the Word says. Now, you listen to the lie long enough, you'll start believing the lie versus believing the Word of God. And when you start moving towards God, everybody wants to get closer to God. You're as close as you want to be. Close as you want to be. I want to move on up. My God, pastor's been preaching on 100%. Dave come in, he wanted to preach the other 15%. What if it's just my one little percent, but praise God, it projected the body some way or another. <laughs> amen, amen. It's time to give up some of these things. Get more of the Spirit of God. You want to find out what your gift is? It's going to cost you. God ain't changed. But I, I cried all the way here because I want this body to move forward with the power of God. I haven't cried like that in years. I'm not saying this to boast or lift myself up, but God was just wringing my heart out all the way to the house of God. But it should be that way all the time. Weeping between the porch and the outer. Not just in the house of God, but at home. You want to know why you don't come to the outer now? It's because you don't do it at home. God help us. I want to see the evidence of the Spirit of God moving in my life. I've got family dying. Don't even know the Lord. They know him with their lips, but their hearts are so far from him. How many people? God knows the heart and intent, but honey, don't, don't take it for granted. Your family knows that there's enough evidence of God in your life to know where, what's going to happen. Are you going to be ready for the resurrection or what? When you leave here, are you going to sleep? God knows. But so does your family. Is there enough evidence in your life that you could honestly ask them? Ask my family. Ask my niece. Her husband, Isaac. No. Evidence of the Spirit of God in your life. Know that you know. They're a child of God. That made me examine myself even more. How close do you think, if God said draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you, God wants to get mighty close to you. He's holy. He wants us to strive against the sin. So easily beset. And some of us wonder why our minds, we get a spirit of fear. We wonder why we get anxious. We wonder why generational curses. Well, we can, if we're not careful, you can use that for an excuse. Like it's greater than the Word of God. The enemy will convince you of it. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart, brother. Lord, let me just justify you to death. He will. He'll get you feeling sorry for yourself. Getting help. You start coming blind to an area that the Lord's wanting to make dead in us so His grace can flow through it, His power. Amen, boy.
come in here. You know it's unholy. But God said, well, we'll let him in this area of our life. We'll let him in this part of the body. We'll let him in this part of the body. I can honestly look at each one. I love you. You're dealing with anything. Anything. I'm ready to help you. I'm ready to help you fight. I'm ready to help you stand against that liar, the father of lies, and just speak the truth. I want to see you go free. No matter how. Rooted lie. God's able to move upon you tonight. And the Holy Ghost burn out anything. God. We need to get back on the altar of God. We need to get back on the altars that's on our hearts and seek God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You know you're nothing outside the grace of God. I love you. I love this body. My God, church. We need to come back together in unity of the spirit and the bond of peace and let's move on forward. Somebody needs to hear our testimony on how God is delivering us. Amen. Quit hiding it. So, whom we serve, who we yield our members to, who we serve. There ain't no way around them scriptures. We know the areas of darkness. Well, I tell you what. You can feel when it's a stronghold in somebody's life because the enemy comes against you and it feels like the prince. But thank God I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I want to see you get delivered. My God. Right? If you stand up, you just start shaking it off. Amen. Cut it with a knife. Somebody needs help. You drowned in that area. You are. My God. If God had a big rope, one of them lifesavers on it, and you was drowning, he was throwing it to you. Grab a hold of it. You know why the enemy wants to keep you over in that area of darkness? Convincing you've got fetters and chains on you. So God's purpose and his destiny that he created you for, he thinks he can stop it. But you're allowing him to stop. You're allowing him to stop yourself. Amen. We want more power with God, but we ain't willing to pay the price. God is using. I love you. Done, bro. Amen. Sometimes in, in church it's difficult to get real like that because, you know, we all want to hide. And, and, and Jesus, when he dealt with hypocrites, um, he wasn't demeaning them. 
He wasn't insulting them. He was just describing them. He was saying, look, <laughs> you put this show on the outside, but I can see what's going on on the inside. He said, you clean up the outside of the cup, but inwardly you're full of excess, excess and extortion. He said, you're whited tombs, you're whited sepulchers. You're, you're, you, you know how to put on the show, but inside it's just broken and death. And one of the things that I have noticed in all of these years now of preaching is that people know how to come to church and put on a face. We know how to do it, right? We know how to come into church and we know how to play the part. We know how to act like everything is all together. But that doesn't get us any help. What gets us help is when we realize that, number one, we're in the house of God. This is not a building that people just attend. This is the house of God. When we come in here and we begin to worship, we create a habitation of God through the spirit. And as a result, this becomes God's habitation in his house. And when the Lord is here, he is our father. And there should be nothing that we cannot talk to our father about. There should be nothing that we cannot bring to our father. And then we have to know. And I know that in many places and many times and many churches, you, 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 you are afraid to really get real. Because if somebody gets the right information on you, amen, by the time you get home, everybody on your block in the neighborhood knows exactly what you're going through. But what I love about this place is this place is full of glass houses. We have all come from such difficult situations and such horrid backgrounds that there is no way to throw stones around here. Because if I bring up your stuff, you bring up my stuff, this whole thing's going to be a mess. This is a safe place because we have to have a safe place because the enemy does justify. He justifies us by saying, well, you can't help it. Well, I don't disagree that I'm weak, but when I am weak, he is strong for his strength is made perfect in my weakness. I don't disagree that I can't do anything about it, but the grace of God, which bringeth salvation hath appeared unto us in these last days, teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live righteously and soberly and godly in this present world, which means the grace of God is much bigger than the cover up that the religious world wants to make it. It is the enabling power of God to create something inside of you that will overcome every area that the enemy has been over overcoming you with and so when I'm going through stuff I just have to say Lord more grace more grace God I don't want to be a I don't want to continually fall prey to that in my life I'm tired of falling in that area I'm tired of struggling in this area and I know that I can't do it on my own I know that I don't have power to deal with it all by myself but I did read in the word of God that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and so when I don't have the strength to deal with it I do know that I serve a God that has all power in his hand and he is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. And that's where we're going to have to really start trusting in God. Some men trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord because that is our only help. David came to Goliath and Goliath said, I'm a man of war from my youth. I mean, look at me. And they sent out a stick to fight me. And David looked at him and said, I didn't come to you with sword and spear. But I came, into you, I came to you in the name of the Lord God of the armies of Israel. And guess what? The giant fell because David didn't come in his own power. Many of us, we face these areas of ruins in our life, and that's what they are. They're places in our life that the enemy has come in and destroyed, and we have very much so been a participant oftentimes in his plan for us. And I'm reminded that when Israel had been raised to the ground by Babylon in 70 years, they were in exile. And finally, God raises up a king that allows Israel to begin to go back to rebuild. And when Zerubbabel gets to Jerusalem, he walks into total ruin and desolation. 
Total ruin and desolation. Everything had been raised to the ground. All there was left was rubble. And I, I am sure that Zerubbabel probably looked at the assignment that was given to him and thought, how in the world would it be possible for us to restore these ruins? And so God had to come to the prophet. And he said, you go tell Zerubbabel, who art thou, O mountain, that standeth before Zerubbabel? In other words, this is not a mountain, Zerubbabel. Because you must know you'll not accomplish it by your might, nor by your power, but you will get this done by my spirit, saith the Lord. And there may be some of you that have, your lives have been destroyed and rocked and ruined, and you are struggling in areas of your life that you seem to stand there every day and say, how in the world would it be possible for anything to be built back after all of the destruction that I have faced. Not all of it was the devil's fault. <laughs> We've tore a lot of things down ourselves. But just as God told Zerubbabel, this is no mountain. This is no mountain. This is not insurmountable. Look at somebody near you and just tell them it's not insurmountable. I'll never get victory in this area of my life. It's not insurmountable. I'll never overcome this. It's not insurmountable. I'll never ever see this restored again. It's not insurmountable. I'll never ever be back to what God wants me to be. It's not insurmountable. Who art thou, O mountain, that standeth before me? In other words, what he's saying is, what is this mountain that is standing to defy you? What is it in your life that you hate, that you do, and you, the enemy has convinced you that there is no way for you to conquer this because it is too big of a mountain standing to defy you. But who art thou, O mountain, who standeth before me? I want you to think about that area of your life right now and just say to it, who art thou, O mountain? Uh, before I came in here tonight, I may have believed that I couldn't get over it. Before I came here tonight, I may have been convinced that I couldn't overcome it. Before I got here tonight, I may have been convinced that this is just the way it's always going to be for me. And this is just the area I'll always fall prey to. But who art thou, O mountain, that stands to defy? I know that I don't have the power, but it's not by my might, nor by my power, but I've got something that has power that is greater than the mountain that stands to defy, and that is the spirit of the living God, and there is no power like the power of the Holy Ghost. There is no high like the most high. There's nothing like the anointing of God that is able to destroy the yoke, able to break every chain able to lose every who art thou O mountain who are you I'm tired of you standing in my way I'm going to speak to you right now for Jesus said if you had the faith of the grain of a mustard seed you speak to that mountain and it will be removed and cast to yonder place who are you O mountain that stands in my way I'm tired of being defied I'm tired of being held back I'm tired of being hidden who are you O mountain in the name of Jesus be moved Somebody shall be moved. Tell that mountain right now, be moved. Be moved out of my life. Be moved out of my mind. Be moved out of my house. Be moved out of my spirit. Who are you, O mountain? Who are you? Hallelujah. Oh. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. 
Who are you, O mountain? Who are you, perversion? Who are you? Who are you, laziness? Who are you? Who are you, idleness? Who are you, gossip? Who are you, lying? Who are you, stealing? Who art thou, O mountain? Who are you? Out of my way. Out of my way. Because you know what the mountain was standing to defy. The first thing that Zerubbabel did when he went into Jerusalem. He didn't lay a stone upon the wall. And he did not lay a stone for the foundation of the house of God. The first thing he did is he rebuilt the altar. The mountain is standing in the way of you rebuilding the altar. The mountain is standing in the way of you rebuilding your prayer life. But who art thou, O mountain? Hallelujah. I don't have the Holy Ghost to sit around and give in to everything that comes into my life. God's given me power. Oh, he said you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh, hallelujah, I got power. And God didn't give me anything greater on the inside for me to lay down and play a victim for the rest of my life to things that he has called me to be victorious in. Oh, hallelujah. Who are you, on mountain? I've got to get back to prayer, so get out of my way. I got to get back to praying in the spirit. Get out of my way. I got to get back to worship. Who are you, on mountain? And one of the things that is causing us to be defeated is not that God lacks power. It's often that we lack prayer. <coughs> but you need to tell the mountain tonight, be moved. I've got too much to do. And quit letting the enemy pat you. And I don't care if he's got a backward collar. Amen. The devil uses all kinds of people to keep us in bondage. You go down to that new destiny. They talk about overcoming sin. You come over here. We'll just let you know Jesus overcame it for you. So no matter what you do, you're good to go. That's a devil right there patting you, saying it don't matter. Just keep. Just, but Paul said, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How is it that we who are dead to sin can live any longer therein? So reckon yourself indeed dead unto sin and alive unto Christ. So who are you, O Mount? I'll never get over it. It's a liar. It's a liar. He's speaking to you. Yeah. Don't worry about it. That'll be the area God will overlook. It won't. He ain't done nothing about it yet. But the Bible said it is because God is not swift to judgment, nor God is not swift. Um, his, he's not hold up it is because God does not execute judgment speedily that men's hearts are hardened it's every time you've done it and God hadn't done nothing about it you thought it was because he didn't care he was just being merciful and the enemy told you see don't listen to them holy people over there, them holiness folk. They're just judgmental, self-righteous hypocrites. That's all they are. Don't listen to those people. You come over here. We're all about love. We're all about love. That is not God love. Because godly love will expose you. Come on, somebody. It, 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 it is, it is, it as, is, 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 as, is, if you're on the railroad tracks. And you're walking down the railroad tracks. And there's a train coming. Folks that want to see you saved are yelling, Stop! Turn back! Turn around! Get off the tracks! We won't talk to you like that around here. We just love you. <laughs> Jesus loves you. 
and he loves your house and your dog, and Jesus loves everything about you, and he just loves you. Boom, run over. The reason why we shout is because you're on the tracks, and the train is coming, and we're just pleading with you. Abandon the track right now. Hallelujah. Because God will not always withhold the train. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. So get off while you can. Hallelujah. Repent and be converted. In other words, repent. In other words, that just means turn around and be fully turned so that times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. And David echoes this. He said, Lord, turn thou me and I will be turned. And when I am turned, I will repent. Who art thou, O mountain? Brother Brent brought up a mountain in his life tonight. But he gave us the understanding of how to overcome the mountain. Speak. Confess your faults one to another. Pray ye one for another that you may be healed. Don't keep quiet. Don't isolate. Oh, the enemy loves to isolate. He really does. He does. He loves to isolate. They don't understand you over there. They're judging you over there. Those people over there, they don't get you. You know, you really can't relate to the people over there. There's just something different about them that is not like you. And, and you need to find a place that's relatable to you. Let me tell you something. If the word of God's being preached and it's truth, you better hold on with all you got. Because if you can't relate to a place that's preaching truth, where do you think the place is that you could relate to? Oh, bless his high and holy name. The saints at the end of the day, I want to see Jesus. Oh, we all going to see him every eye and every knee and every tongue it is his response that will be what is most important in my life he will either say depart from me because you practice iniquity or he will say well done my good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a few things. Now I am going to make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. It is not, it is not seeing him that is most important. What's in most important is what will he respond. And I, I want to be ready. Oh, I, I want to be ready. Oh, I, I want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. Oh, I, I want to be ready. Oh, I, I want to be ready. Oh, I, I want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. Oh, I, I want to be ready. Can't speak for you, but I, I want to be ready. Oh, I. I want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. The Bible said, let a man examine himself. See if he's even in the faith. And I know we have this whole idea that, well, once you get saved, you can't, you know, you'll never, ever. The Bible said many will depart from the faith 
You had to be in it to leave it. Many will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I just want to be ready. And, and I want to give you an opportunity. We won't tarry long. But maybe there's some of you in here that say, you know what, Brother Brent? Well, he really put a powerful light on me. And I'm struggling. But that's why we pray one for another. I'm not here to beat you down. <laughs> Please. I need God's grace every day of my life. I'm not blowing smoke <laughs> every day. I'm like, God, give me more grace. Because none of us are good people without Jesus. The Bible said there is none good, not even one. Paul said, in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. When you think you're a good person that just needs Jesus to be saved, you're not even saved yet. You got to be convicted that you are a vile person who if you should stand before God without the blood of Jesus Christ and give an answer to every deed, you would fall woefully short. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been brought nigh unto God. So I don't want anyone here thinking, well, if I go up there and people can judge me, they're going to know I'm struggling with something. Okay. I mean, if you go struggle with something, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't walk up to the doors of the hospital when I hurt myself and go, if I go in there, they're going to know something's wrong. They're going to figure it out. I don't want people standing there looking at me going, I wonder what's wrong with him. I just go right in there and say, I got to see a doctor because I need some help right now. This is the hospital. And so you come and you get prayed for. Yeah, we all going to know you come and got prayed for because you're struggling. That's what this is for. It's what we do. It's how we make it through. And when I see people who act like they don't have no struggles, I think, hmm, somebody's going to help me out here. Brother, brother, brother Earl said the other Sunday night, he goes, all you people that don't think, you, that think you're good enough to not go to church, why don't you come and help us out? <laughs> come on, help us. If you're that good, why don't you come out here and help us out? Because we are, we are miserably short of that. So why don't you come and help me out if you're so good, so wonderful, and say you got it so good with Jesus that you don't need the church. Well, then that is, ought to be the reason you come here. You say, I need to help that preacher out. I need to help him get as good as I am. <laughs> but we need the church. So if you're in here tonight, and you say, I really need some prayer. I've got some strongholds in my life, some struggles in my life that I need the Lord to really help me with. More grace, more grace. More of the Spirit of God flowing in that area of my life to overcome it. Because who art thou a mountain? It doesn't have a right to stand to defy you. And you know it's standing in the way of your prayer life. You know it's standing in the way of your relationship with God. Then the mountain has to move. And it can move tonight. All you've got to do is speak. So let's stand our feet all over this place, and then I'm going to open this altar. I'm going to pray and open this altar. And if you are needing prayer, please come. Please come. Well, they'll know I have problems. Yep. You are in good company. <laughs> That's the reason why our sign says new destiny. Because we believe this is the place you can begin again. And I've raised with my wife four children. We have three grandchildren. And the one thing that you understand about children is they all grow and mature at their pace. Not everybody's on the same level. And it's the same way in the church. Some of us are coming in now. Some of us have come in for years ago and we're, we're growing at the pace. But we have to strive. We have to strive. 
So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for the word that has been preached tonight. Our hearts have been pricked. God, we just know we need you. I mean, Lord, what are we going to do without you? And trying to struggle this thing through on our own is not getting us anywhere. We need grace and help, and we need a body of believers that knows there is power in the name of Jesus to overcome these areas. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. So, God, I pray tonight for those who are struggling tonight with areas of strongholds in their life. The enemy is trying to convince them they will never overcome, but who art thou, O mountain? It is time for you to move in their life so that they can go and repair the altar. God, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, help us tonight, God. And Lord, let this altar be effective and powerful so that they leave this place forever changed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Some have already come. If you are in this place and you say, Pastor Jared, I, need, I just need it. I need it. Come speak to that mountain. Don't worry about it. Just come speak to that mountain and say, you've got to move. I can't lose because of this. I can't lose out because of this. I need to be free in my life. Vern, if you would just play a song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we speak to the mountains. God, we speak to the strongholds in the name of Jesus. You don't have a right to stay here. You don't have a right to overcome us. Hallelujah. We are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. We are made overcomers because we love not our lives unto the death. We are unashamed to call upon the name of the Lord. For he that calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, spirits of perversion, Lord, spirits of addiction, God, spirits of depression, anxiety, fear. Lord God, areas of lying, God, and, 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 and deceit in our lives, oh God, break it in the name of Jesus, Lord. Who are you, O oh mountain? You have to move in the name of Jesus. Speak to it, saints. Speak to it. Call its name. Speak to it. Move in the name of Jesus. Move out of my life. Move out of my home. Move out. Move in the name of Jesus go to yonder place go to yonder place I'm tired of you standing in my way I'm tired of you standing in my way in the name of Jesus I want to go on and know the Lord I want to go on and serve God I want to go on and live for God I want to go on and do what God's called me to do I want to go on and be what God's calling me to be to realize my destiny to realize my calling to realize the anointing on my life oh move mountain in the name of Jesus move in the name of Jesus vanity self-centeredness selfishness move in the name of Jesus anger bitterness hostility move in the name of Jesus doubt and fear move in the name of Jesus backbiting lying gossiping move in the name of Jesus move 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 every hidden work of dishonesty move in the name of Jesus move in the name of Jesus move in the name of Jesus oh God hallelujah arrogance pride ego move in the name of Jesus fornication adultery move in the name of Jesus pornography move in the name of Jesus 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 oh God in the name of Jesus oh I trust you Lord you're my strength God you're my help Lord you're my way maker Jesus I trust you Lord more grace God 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 oh I need more grace Lord hallelujah hallelujah I don't have enough Lord, I need more grace. I need more grace. Oh, more mercy, more wisdom, more understanding, more knowledge, more anointing. Oh, God, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Mountain go. Mountain go. In the name of Jesus. I'm trusting the Lord with this now. I've handled it all on my own. I've handled it all on my own. I've handled it long enough. I'm trusting the Lord. I'm putting it into the hands of the Lord. I'm going to be honest with him. I'm going to be clear with him. I'm going to be transparent with him. I'm putting this in the hands of the Lord. I'm going forward in God. I'm not staying backward anymore. I'm not going backward anymore. I'm going forward in the name of Jesus. So move you mountains. of infirmity move in the name of Jesus move in the name of Jesus every time I would go forward hallelujah infirmity comes upon me move in the name of Jesus Because, Lord, you just don't have to understand anything. You've given me all things pertaining to life and godliness. You've given me your word to overcome this. You've given me your spirit to have power. Oh, God, to defeat this in the name of Jesus. No, God, you don't just have to understand. You've given me everything I need. You've given me everything I need. The choir just as I am and now as the old oh, song Jesus. is played oh Jesus people at the altar are kneeling down to pray thank you Lord and some thank are finding Lord. mercy thank you Lord forgiveness for thank their you, sins Lord. thank you Lord some are thank finding you, Lord. that Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's what this altar is Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's what this altar is for. Oh, hallelujah. You don't have to care. Rebuild that altar in your life. Go home and rebuild that altar. Repair that closet of prayers. Jesus is waiting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go quickly now before they close the door. That's what this altar is for. You don't have to carry those burdens 
God is so good, saints, and the Lord knows just what we need, and he tailors everything to meet the need of our life, and I'm just so grateful for it. While they're continuing to pray at the altar, Brother Earl, if you would, just come and bring the offering plates, and you can set them here at the altar, and if you have tithes and offerings, you're welcome to give them. We do need help as we continue to remodel the parsonage. If you would like to help us, you can see Brother Earl, uh, and he will give you a time and a place to be there. But saints, may God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. As you give, you can be dismissed in the name of the Lord. Amen. Play something, Vern, while they come to give. I give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can. Come on, let it know. I give myself. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. What would happen? It's a generation.